Hello everybody, it's Mark, and I'm here with another edition of my desk side talks. I don't really have anything to talk about. In regards to board games, I'm still trying to get games that I need to play played. I counted and there are 10 games now here that I have not played, which I believe is the most ever for me. It's not a lot for some people who persistently have games they don't play, but I really try hard to avoid that situation. So it's almost a little bit stressful having games, you know, that I need to play that I can't get around to playing yet. And just kind of picking one and going with it is, uh, is difficult. But as I said before, these are very minor complaints in the world of having too many games to play. It's kind of a silly thing to talk about. Other than that, the week's been pretty, pretty rough for me. I have spoken on the, on the, the website before about how I deal with depression, and this is one of the worst weeks in a while for me. It's the same kind of situation I've seen before where I'm not able to keep coherent thoughts in my mind. I try to sit down and write reviews. I'm already two articles past due, I guess, on my self-imposed schedule, and it's it's been extremely difficult for me to write generally in the last month or so, but this week in particular has been very bad for me which is odd because I had a fantastic weekend this past weekend where two dear friends came came to visit from California and we played a bunch of games and had a lot of fun and just a fantastic time uh, spending time with them. And then immediately after they left, I don't know, because of it, like the highs of that weekend combined with the kind of a crashing down. And so I figured if I can't seem to write about board games, if I can't seem to think about anything except for my own mental state, then let's try to do something productive out of it. And that's why I'm talking about it right now. I know it's kind of, I've spoke about this before on, on the article I wrote, but it's, it feels like both something positive to speak about one's own mental uh, issues and kind of a cliche because it seems to happen so often, which is a difficult contradiction for me to reconcile. But I figure if it's the only thing I can think about and construct thoughts about in my mind, then let's do something positive with it. So what I'm thinking is instead of continuing with these desk side talks where I just speak on random subjects, let's try to talk about mental health issues in the board game community in the general nerd community, because it seems to me anecdotally that mental health issues, I don't know if it's true, but it seems like a greater percentage of people in these kinds of communities at least speak about mental health issues. I don't know which way, if that is true, I don't know which way the causation runs or the correlation runs. Is it that nerds are more likely to have mental health issues or that people with mental health issues are more likely to be nerds. Either way, though, it's still an important subject to speak about with gentleness and restraint and compassion. I know that my issues aren't as severe as probably most people's issues, but it's still awful. And In trying to think of how to speak about this positively, here's what I've come up with. Instead of just talking about random subjects on the off weeks on the podcast, I want to try to create an outlet where people can talk about mental health issues, at least as a test run. Give it one week, give it two weeks maybe, I don't know. So if you're out there and this is something that you want to talk about, again, positively, Um, with encouragement, with your own experiences and advice, contact me, let me know. We can get you on the podcast uh, for these off weeks. And maybe for however long I have people willing to talk about it, we'll have some encouragement for other people who are maybe dealing with this kind of thing in secret. Because the insidious lie of depression is that you're unique and going about it all alone. And in some case, in some senses, that's true. Everyone has kind of different unique factors involved or, or different unique spins on, on, the, on the illness, but it's something classified, which means that there are commonalities to it. 
So the lie is that there's no one else out there who's struggling the same way. And so in talking about it, we can help show people that they're not alone and that there, there is a way to, to get better and recover from it. So again, if you are someone listening to this who wants to hop on in the podcast and talk to me about it for even five minutes, I think that's what I'll try to do in these off week podcasts, at least for the near future, see how it goes, see if it's something that people respond positively to. I think that's everything I had to say about the topic. The other topic I wanted to talk about is Star Wars, since I saw the movie twice over the weekend, and it seems to be a hot topic of discussion on the internet. And I figure there's a lot of crossover between people who listen to this podcast and people who enjoy Star Wars. I just wanted to get my thoughts about it because it's one of the few things I can form thoughts about this week. Honestly, I was really, I I saw the movie first on Thursday night, so I was one of the first people to see it, and I love the movie. And for those who have been listening for a while who have heard my comments about movies before, I am fairly picky. Some would say snobbish about movies. And so, for instance, I hated the new Thor movie, and in discussions afterwards, I think I, I even told, I think it was Matt, that movies like Thor are an actual problem in our culture, that they're just harming, they're harming our culture because they're so moronic. But coming out of Star Wars, I thought it was a fantastic film. I think it's one of my favorite Star Wars films. I I need to revisit the original trilogy to see how I view those coming back after I, hadn't, I haven't really seen them in a couple years, I think maybe three, four years. I think I'm going to try to do that over Christmas, watch the original trilogy, but I think The Last Jedi was really, really well done and certainly the best of the three new uh, reboot, not reboot, the three new movies. But it seems to have a lot of people who are absolutely disgusted, not disgusted, they, they just hated it. And the main complaints I've seen online is something that is along the lines of something I've seen frequently in nerd culture that's like continuity obsession. And in some senses, it makes sense because people in nerd culture like things to make sense within the universe. And the problem is that Star Wars is and never has been about presenting a coherent physical universe from the beginning. It's never obeyed laws of physics. It's never even tried to it's modeled after kind of whiz bang adventure stories from uh, the early 20th century uh, flash Gordon. It's also modeled slightly after Kurosawa samurai films, although that's less relevant to this topic. But because I think there's so much expanded universe content, especially before Disney purchased the rights that took a harder science fiction stance on it rather than a space opera stance. And Star Wars really is a space opera in the most literal sense of the word. It's very much designed to be like an opera. It's very Shakespearean. It's very bold visually with its color, with its the way the, way the characters speak, its language, its themes, the things that happen are everything's kind of large and dramatic and melodramatic even. And so I view Star Wars in that lens and not from a kind of world building, harder science fiction lens. I think the people who really hated The Last Jedi are looking at it from that latter perspective. And to me, that's never been what Star Wars is about. Here's why I really enjoyed The Last Jedi. To me, it spoke on themes that very spoke on themes very clearly that the other movies only alluded to, particularly with the nature of the force vis-a-vis the Jedi and the Sith. Because one of the interesting things about the prequels, and if you think all the prequels are garbage, you probably will disagree with everything I say, because I actually fairly enjoy the prequels, especially episode one. But in the prequels, you have this tension between well, you, you get a lot more, you see a lot more about the Jedi Order and, and the Jedi themselves. 
And one of the main themes of the prequels is that the Jedi themselves made mistakes. The Jedi weren't a perfect ambassador of this kind of light side of the force. And in The Last Jedi, they really talk about that because Luke wants to end the Jedi. And I'm going to talk about tons of spoilers. So warning, if you haven't seen the movie yet, just don't listen to this. I'm talking about all the spoilers. Luke wants to end what he says is the Jedi religion, which I think is a very interesting choice of words because it really isn't a omniscient source. It's just a religion based around this reality of the universe of the Force. And so if you get rid of the order of the Jedi order, how do you rebuild that? And how do you conceive of the light side of the Force? And that's really the kind of things that, that the, the Last Jedi are talking about, which makes the conflict, particularly between Rey and Kylo, fascinating. Because you have Luke making a convincing argument that we should just completely forget about what we know of the Jedi and just forget about it. And you have Kylo making the same convincing argument where he says, let's forget about the, the Empire, let's forget about the, the Republic, which we show as kind of a failure in the prequels, forget about the Sith, etc., etc., let's just start over. And at that moment, in that bit of dialogue, which is just an astounding work of writing and editing in that entire sequence with Rey and Kylo fighting the Imperial Guards, with the uh, hyperspace attack on the star, I forget what they called it, the, the, the big star destroyer ship, the big triangle, cross-cutting between the two and seeing those two conflicts of, first of all, one aspect of hero heroism playing out on a beautiful level where uh, she shoots the, the ship into the, the Empire ship to buy them time and to destroy, or at least partially destroy that ship, and the conflict between Rey and Kylo where he presents, again, a very convincing argument that they need to kind of wipe the slate clean. And this is one of the areas where the movie does something brilliant. And it does this throughout the film is that it's simultaneously embracing kind of the very basic good and evil themes of the original trilogy while being extremely self-aware about itself. And I guess that's what self-aware means about Star Wars, about the reality of Star Wars in our culture. So in that sense, it's, it, it's a very postmodern take on Star Wars, but not a cynical one. Because in the end, and, and that's really the conflict, is what do we do in a world that's so cynical, that's so prone to just bashing down these kind of basic virtues? How do you make a movie that embraces those basic virtues? Well, you have to have the dialogue with the culture then. And that's what the movie tries to do. And it says, okay, we'll be cynical about it. Let's be cynical about the Jedi. Let's be cynical about the Republic, about the rebellion and strip away all the things that or not strip away, expose all the things that make them failures. And then what do you come out with? Well, you come out with a very realist moral framework that I think is fascinating where when you take away the Jedi, there is still a good moral framework. And that's why Ray rejects it. Not because I think the argument from Kylo is bad, but because she recognizes that in him, there is evil, regardless of the name we put on it. He may not necessarily be Sith, but he still has evil intent. Strip away the, the ideas of the Jedi and the Republic, and the rebellion still has good intent. And that's, I think, the brilliance of the film, is that it has that dialogue not only between the characters, but between the movie and us as consumers and of Star Wars, and says, okay, what's the core of this? And it comes out of it with a very, again, realist, virtuous moral framework. And I think that's fantastic. Now, I was thinking of something about this where Matt and I were discussing Star Wars, 
And he brought up this phrase that's bothered me for a long time. He's like, oh, it's just a very simple good versus evil story. And that's always bothered me because, okay, you know, the world's not just good versus evil. It's often very difficult. And what I realized is that I had conceived of what a good versus evil story is wrong. I, I, I misconceived it. And I always thought when people, well, maybe people mean this, but I always thought, okay, a good versus evil story is where you have one side that is a metaphorical representation of good, and you have another side that's a metaphorical representation of evil, and there's no nuance in there. But that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It can be that there is a side that's trying to do good and a side that's trying to good do evil, and they're working that out amongst themselves. But in the world, there still is, as an ob in objective sense, good and evil. And that's what a good versus evil narrative should look like. And I think that's what Star Wars does really well. The problem is that, and this is anecdotal, I know, but it's driving me nuts that all the criticism of the movie is on this very technical continuity grounds of, oh, can the Force really do that? We never learned that Leia could use the Force. We never knew that you could hyperdrive into another ship. Why don't they do that all the time? Why is the movie so funny? Why do we have this casino world? And the reason we have the casino world is, again, to highlight those tensions and those themes of what you do when moral good and evil and the sides blend together. You strip it away and and, and remove all the pretext and come away with this kind of nihilistic perspective, or do you come away with a clearer perspective of what's right? And that's, it may not be a perfect way to kind of push that theme forward, but I think the casino world did it decently. But all the, all the object objections completely ignore the thematic element. And that's what Star Wars is about. It's about big swashes of red and blue and dramatic music and lighting and f lightsaber fights that are less about the construction of the fight and more about the characters doing the fight. Isn't that what we all missed in the prequels largely? And now that they bring this stuff back, people I find are just completely ignoring it and focusing on the scientific technicalities of it. And it drives me nuts. I cannot stand, I don't understand what people who look, view movies like that, what they want, because they're looking at movies from, to me, in my, maybe, and I could be completely wrong about this, but it seems like they're looking at movies from a very pessimistic viewpoint. They're coming into a movie and saying, okay, where are all the problems I can find in this movie? Instead of going into the movie and saying, okay, what's the movie trying to do here? Is the movie effective in what it's trying to do? Does the movie take me in? Does it does it su succeed rather than looking at it and saying, does it fail? And I'm a very critical person, but I think that you have to be optimistic in your viewpoint. You have to assume that there's something good in what you're trying to view. Otherwise, why are you watching it? And I've seen a lot of people even, again, this is all anecdotal, and I know the movie largely has a positive following behind it, but I've seen a lot of people are saying, oh, I hated The Last Jedi and only Empire Strikes Back or only Empires and A New Hope are the only good Star Wars. They're the only ones that are even worth watching. And at that point, I'm thinking, well, why haven't you just given up on the movies then? Maybe you love the expanded universe stuff. Maybe you love the TV show, The Clone Wars, which I, I now really want to watch because I hear it's really good. Maybe you love the books, but at this point, after like six or seven failures in your mind in a row, I think it's the Star Wars movies you don't like. Like, it's just the product that you don't like. It's not that they're screwing up all of them. It's that they are something you don't like. And so it's been really kind of discouraging to me, which is a silly thing to say, because it's ultimately it's a silly movie. Like Star Wars is silly. It's always been silly. That doesn't mean it doesn't have interesting things to say, but it's always been silly. But I don't know. It's really bothered me. And it's something that I noticed in nerd culture a lot is this fanaticism over completely cohesive world building, even if that's not something that the product is trying to do. And that's what's happening with Star Wars here. I hope that whoever, whatever producers are continuing with the series don't take these kinds of comments to heart necessarily, or if they do, at least they don't give up on what 
really interesting ideas were presented in The Last Jedi because I thought it was one of the best movies I've seen this year. I was thinking about it, and I need to go back and see what movies I have seen from this year. But I think behind Logan, I think it's probably my favorite film of the year. Anyway, that's what I had to say about Star Wars. Again, regarding the first part of this podcast, if you do struggle with mental illness or you have anything to say on the subject and you want to have a quick discussion with me during one of our off-week podcasts, please contact me. Uh, emails mark, M-A-R-C, at thethoughtfulgamer.com, and we can try to work something out because it's, so, it's, it's something good to talk about. It's good if it can help one person who understands that they're not alone in their struggles, then it will be worth it. And it's probably, and at that point, it would certainly be better than me just rambling on of whatever topics are on my mind. So that's it for today. Check out the website. Check me out at Twitter and Facebook. Don't forget to rate and review this. And if you do enjoy this podcast, uh, I do have a Patreon where you can uh, help me out a bit uh, in trying to achieve my goals so I can not be in the red for 2018. And you can get all kinds of sweet bonuses like being on our community Discord, which is a lot of fun. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week when we have our end of the year review where we talk about our favorite games, our least favorite games, what we're looking forward to, uh, various awards, arbitrary awards I'm going to come up with that highlight interesting games from the year. I think it'll be an awesome time. Goodbye, everyone.